In this lecture, you'll learn about the initial peering setup for snap mirror and snap vault when you're replicating between different clusters. The first thing that you need to do is to add your licenses. In the later versions of ONTAP, you only need to add snap mirror licenses on your source and destination clusters that licenses you for both snap mirror and snap vault now if you're using snap mirror synchronous you do also need to add the additional snap mirror synchronous license as well the command to add a license you know this one already is license add next thing that you need to do is to add your intercluster logical interfaces for the replication traffic going between the clusters, it can use your normal lifts that are being used for your client data access. You need to use dedicated intercluster lifts for this. The command to create the logical interfaces is exactly the same as if you were doing normal lifts for client data access. The difference is that you need to specify role intercluster. Now, if you are replicating within the same cluster, you don't need intercluster lifts, but by far more commonly, when you're using StatMirror and StatVault, it is going to be between different clusters. So you use the network interface create command to create the lifts. You can use a subnet to specify the IP addresses on your lifts. If you're using a subnet, you're gonna have the default gateway configured there for the routing. If you're not using a subnet, then you'll need to configure the default gateway separately with the network route create command. Next up, you need to do the cluster and the SVM peering. The peering again is for when the replication is going between the two different clusters. So to peer the clusters first, you say cluster peer create, and then to peer the SVMs, you say vServer peer create. Okay, let's look at each of these commands in a bit more detail. So starting off with configuring your intercluster lifts. At least one intercluster lift must be created on every node in the cluster. The intercluster lifts can share underlying physical ports with data lifts, or they can be on their own dedicated physical ports. The bandwidth can be throttled to perform prevent performance degradation to clients during replication if using shared physical ports. So if on the same physical ports, you've got client data access running on there, and whenever a replication runs, you don't want that to be taking bandwidth or too much bandwidth away from the client data access, then you can throttle your intercluster replication traffic. The other thing you can do is just put the intercluster on lifts, on separate dedicated physical interfaces, then it's not gonna affect your client data traffic. Your intercluster and lifts should be running on the same type of underlying physical ports with equal performance characteristics. There must be a full mesh of connectivity between intercluster and lifts in both clusters. So in both clusters, you need to configure an intercluster lift on every node in both clusters, and you need to make sure that all of those lifts have got connectivity to each other. Ensure TCP ports 10,000, 11,104, 11,105, and HTTPS are open between the lifts. So if you've got firewalls between the two clusters, make sure that those ports are open for the intercluster replication traffic. And time must be no more than five minutes out of sync on the different clusters for replication to succeed. So you should be using an NTP server in your environment to make sure that your clusters are synced to the same time. So that's no more than five minutes for the replication to succeed. Also for the cluster and SVM peering, again, there must be no more than five minutes time difference between the two clusters. Now you can use a local name option if clusters or SVMs have the same name on both sides. This capability came out in later versions of ONTAP. So in previous versions of ONTAP, your SVMs on both sides had to always have unique names. So you couldn't have SVMs with the same names on both clusters. And you can see here the reason for that. So you see in the snap mirror create command, you specify for the paths, you specify the SVM name and the volume name. That's both for the source path and for the destination path. 
you don't specify the cluster name. So if, for this example, we're configuring this on the destination side, if the destination cluster had an SVM which was named Department A, and then you're trying to replicate from a source SVM which is called Department A, it would be confused. It wouldn't know which one you're talking about. So in previous versions, your SVMs on all clusters that you were doing replication from, the SVMs always had to have unique names to stop that confusion. In later versions of ONTAP, the capability is being added that you can use a local name option. So using that same example again, if on this destination cluster, I've got an SVM, which is also called Department A, then what I can do is I can say that the local name for Department A on the remote cluster is Department A underscore source, for example. So that allows you to configure a different name, which is just known locally. Now, obviously, this would make things confusing. So you would only do this if you had to. So if you were in a situation where the clusters had been created before, you hadn't realized that you were going to be replicating between them and you ended up with SVMs which are the same name and now it's just really not possible to change the SVM name, there is a workaround for it where you can use the local name option. But if you do, if you have the opportunity to do proper planning beforehand, when you're planning out your clusters and the SVM naming, make sure that the SVMs do all have unique names across all of the different clusters. When you do configure the peering, the offers are made from one cluster. The other cluster has one hour to accept the request by default. So you put the peering offer in on one side, and then once that's been done on the other side, you have to accept that offer. By default, you've got one hour to do so, but you can specify a long time period if you want to. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.